Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to be seeing if I can beat Cuphead with the worst loadout possible. So one day I was coming up with challenge ideas and I thought it'd be cool to do the worst shot challenge, which is interesting on its own, but that's already been done before, shout out to Magicat. Hey, yo! So I thought I would make it harder, maybe? I don't know. So yeah, I made a Google Forms for my fans to fill out asking what the worst charm for every boss was, what the worst super art for every boss was, and what the worst weapon for every aerial boss was. So the rules for this challenge are actually pretty simple. Every boss must be completed on expert difficulty, and other than that, it's just I must use every single thing I'm given. So obviously I'm going to use every shot, but I need to make sure that I use my super art at least once, and use my charm at least once throughout the entire boss fight. Just a quick reminder before this video begins, hit the subscribe button because only 5% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed and that's kind of sad, so yeah. Uh. Also, we have a Discord. Join the Discord, the link will be in the description below. It's a really cool place to just talk about whatever you want, and you get to engage with people who are a part of the community, hopefully like yourself. So yeah, if you like the video, consider subscribing, and if not, leave a like on the video, and if not, I hope you enjoy it. With all that out of the way, let's get right into the video. For the first boss of this challenge, we're gonna mix it up and go with Cagney Carnation. The loadout I had for this boss fight was the Lobber as my shot, the Whetstone as my charm, and Super Art 3 as my super. The only thing that's somewhat bothersome is his first phase, and that's mainly just because he spawns a bunch of floating minion plant things. And it's somewhat hard to kill them because I only have these big giant ball no and it's decently hard to kill them with the lobber shot but i found that if i just shoot upwards then they keep bouncing off the ground and it's way easier to kill them like that and yeah once i figured that out it wasn't terrible the next boss for this challenge is going to be goopy le go go goopy go goopy le gru goopy le gru <laughs> I have literally the exact same loadout as the last fight, so the Lobber as my shot, Whetstone as my charm, and Super Art 3 as my super. So the strategy for this boss is non-existent. I just shoot Lobber shots around and hope I hit him, and that's literally it. During the phase transition, I'm going to use my super art, and other than that, I'm just going to jump around as much as possible to do as much damage, and he's done. Alright, the next boss up in this challenge is going to be the Root Pack. Believe it or not, for this boss fight, our loadout actually changes. For our shot, we have the Chaser. For our Charm, we got the Whetstone. And for our Super, we have Super Art 2. I don't really have much to say about this boss fight. The Chaser is actually a decent shot, especially if you use the EXs enough. And other than that, the Whetstone is really useful, especially in the final phase. And yeah, we beat them. Next up, I've saved the two hardest bosses in Inkwell Isle 1 for last, and we've got your favorite, you know him, you love him, Kermit, and the other one. But this last one is really the one that stands out here. Bring up 911. Um, okay. Alright, so the loadout I had for this boss was the spread as my shot, the whetstone as my charm, and of course, Super Art 3 as my super. Spread is actually a decent shot for pretty much this entire boss fight. It works perfectly in Phase 1, especially for the Fireflies. And in Phase 2, if I'm able to stay close to Croaks, it works really, really well. But that all changes once we enter the final phase. If you don't know, for the final phase, the slot machine actually sends out a bunch of obstacles that you have to jump or dash in between or whatever. And the only problem is, with the spread shot, I need to be nice and close. And that's a bad thing because that's where the objects come from. So... The main strategy is just to stick as close as possible and try not to take stupid damage. I didn't do a perfect job of that, but we still won. Alright, we're on to the final boss of Inkwell Isle 1, and that's Hildeberg. So, since plane levels can't change your super, I decided to change it up and actually go with a different shot for every boss fight. So for this boss fight, we can only use the Lobber Bombs. Other than that, our charm was the Pea Sugar, and that's our whole loadout. I don't really have much to say about this boss fight. The Lobber Bombs are kind of annoying, and it's hard because I always have to stay at the top of the screen to actually hit her. But 
other than that it's not terrible the final phase is also a bit bad just because I can't stay at the top of the screen so it took longer than I wanted but we still beat her Ooh, I... <laughs> the next boss up is gonna be Beppy the Clown. Now our loadout for this boss fight is gonna be the Chaser as our shot, Whetstone as our charm, and Super Art 3 as our super. Now this loadout's not actually that bad. Since I have the bonus damage from the Whetstone, it actually balances out the bad damage by the Chaser, and overall it's actually not that bad. The Whetstone was really really good for the second phase, I could parry up and then use my EX moves for a ton of damage. And then, other than that, I don't really have much else to say. I did the same thing for the fourth phase, and the third phase I kind of just stood there, and hope I didn't die. But yeah, other than just dodging and hoping that the chaser did enough damage, that was it. Next boss up in this challenge, and it's gonna be the sugar lady woman whatever. My loadout for this boss fight was the Lobber as my shot, the Whetstone as my charm, and Super Art 3 as the super. The first mini boss she sent out was EDP. Whoa, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake! This mini boss is really really easy to beat because most of the time he's on the ground and the Lobber shots don't go very far off the ground so I can actually do a lot of damage and we finished it pretty quickly. The next mini boss on the list is gonna be the Gumball Machine. Now again, He's basically like a ginormous wall, so all my lobber shots run into him, so I do so much damage, and we finish this again really, really fast. The third and final mini boss is going to be the candy corn. This one's a bit more annoying, but since the lobber does so much damage, I'm able to easily get past this phase and go on to the final phase. The final phase is the real reason why the lobber is the worst shot for this boss fight. It's not a good shot especially for this but the platform in the middle makes it a little bit better because i can stand up on top of the platform and then just jump up and down and i do get a bit of damage in and it's also nice that the lobber does so much damage because i don't have to worry about hitting her with a ton of the bullets i just have to worry about hitting her a couple times and then we win all right our next boss is going to be wally warbles before i get into this boss fight i've been recording this video over a couple days and recently I've had a really bad thing with my asthma and my throat feels like I just ate half a pound of razor blades so I currently feel like ass garbage so if you can hear a difference in my voice I apologize but anyways that doesn't matter let's get into the boss since this was a plain level our charm is obviously gonna be the pea sugar and our shot is obviously gonna be the pea shooter I don't know what to call it the pea shooter actually works really really well against this boss and it's really only bad once they get into the final phase. I don't really have anything to say about this boss. I practice it so much for the cup lock when I could only use this weapon. So I can't really complain because it's really really easy. I know how to do a lot of damage really really fast and once he gets down to the final phase sure it's a bit annoying but we got it done. And now we move on to the final boss of Inquile 2, the bane of my existence, the piss in my pants if you will, Grim Matchstick. <laughs> so it's safe to say I don't like this boss fight. Normally if I was using something like the Lobber it'd be perfectly fine, but unfortunately that's not what this challenge is. For this boss fight I'm using the spread shot. Other than that, I'm also using the Whetstone and Super Art 3. The spread shot overall for this boss fight is garbage in the first and second phase, but I can at least get somewhat close to him to deal damage. Once he enters his third phase, that that's not happening. So pretty much the only time I could deal damage was when he does the flamethrower attack, I can duck underneath it and do a lot of damage, but that's after I have to dodge a bunch of dumbass fireballs. So in short, this boss fight takes a really long time to complete, and especially during the third phase, I can only attack during a certain period without taking damage. So I'ma let you just watch it. Oh my god, dude, I'm... 
<laughs> ah! Let's go! So, after about two hours of attempts, we finally got this boss beaten, and we're on to Inkwell Isle 3. The first boss up in Inkwell Isle 3 is going to be the classic Rumor Honey Bottoms. For this boss fight, my shot was Twist Up, my charm was the Whetstone, and then obviously my super was Super Art 3. Both the first phase and the second phase of this boss fight are decently easy, especially if you aim, but that's not me, so, you know. She mainly stayed in the middle during the second phase, which made that really easy, because I could just stand there and do a ton of damage. I used my super during the phase transition, and sadly, I did have to aim during the third phase just to hit her. But I did enough damage during the phase transition that I didn't have to wait for too long, and we finished it. The next boss up for this challenge is going to be Captain Brinybeard. Now, this boss is actually extremely easy, even with the worst shot. So easy that we even did it first try. My loadout for this boss fight was the Lobber as my shot, Whetstone as my charm, and believe it or not, Super R3 as my super. Basically, since the Lobber does so much damage, I can stick really close to him and then just keep jumping, and I do a ton of damage, so... Pretty much the entirety of his first phases are extremely easy. Once he enters his fourth phase, that's when it gets a bit annoying, just because I don't have as much range or accuracy as I would with any other shot. But I basically just have to choose my openings, and other than that, it's just a lot of waiting, but it's a pretty easy boss fight. There we go. First attempt. Hua! Alright, the next boss on the list is going to be Wiener Rat. So, this boss is another boss that is extremely easy. So easy, in fact, that we did it again first try. The shot that I had for this boss was the Chaser, the Charm was of course the Whetstone, and the Super was obviously Super Art 3. I used my Whetstone instead of pairing the things in the first phase just because I found it easier. I also used my Super Art 3 during his second phase because that did a lot of damage. I think. And then other than that, it was just a lot of dodging and using my EXs. I used the Whetstone quite a lot in the final phase, and that, paired with just a ton of EX moves, made this boss pretty easy. The next boss up is going to be the Phantom Express. I know this is out of order, but I don't care. Now, I was filming this around the same time I was doing the Can You Beat Cuphead Without Killing Any Minions video, so it's safe to say this boss is absolutely horrible, both for that challenge and for this challenge, and I absolutely hate it. Ah! Fuck, are you fucking kidding me? How close was he? Huh? <sighs> This boss is just always the worst boss all the time, ever. Anyways, the loadout I used for this boss fight was the Lobber as my shot, the Whetstone as my charm, and believe it or not, Super Art 3 as my super. I don't really have any strategies for this boss fight. During the second phase, I just aimed up with the Lobber and it did enough damage to kill him. During the third phase, I wanted to use the Whetstone as much as possible because it does a lot of damage, and also the Lobber does a lot of damage. So... You know? And then the final phase, I just had to hope that I did some type of damage at all. I really tried to hit him with supers because I knew that that did a lot, a lot of damage. But other than that, it was just a bunch of trial and error and hope that I win. And that's it. Oh my god. <laughs> ah! Alright, these next two bosses I found out that I don't actually have the footage for them, so I just had to go rebeat them, and somehow I did both of them first try. I have no idea. But the first one's gonna be Sally Stage Play. Now, this is where the boss fight gets a bit crazy. My loadout for this challenge was, if you can believe it, the Lobber, the Whetstone, and Super Art 3. For this boss, I kind of had this strategy where I would use the whetstone and then jump over top of her, and then once I was on the other side, then she would already be set to do her attack in the opposite direction of me, so I could just sit there and do tons of damage with the lobber. 
Once she entered her third phase, I used my super art for a ton of damage. And then after that, I just tried to save up EXs to get the final phase over as fast as possible. And we finished it. Let's just like do this first try. How about that? If I do this first try... Our next boss is obviously Calamaria, and it's a plane boss, so you could probably guess what we have already. For our shot, we've got the bombs, and for our charm, we have the pea sugar. I'm gonna be completely honest here, I also don't have a strategy for this one. You didn't have to cut me Literally all I tried to do was use my super as much as possible because I knew it did big damage and it's way harder to do damage with the lobber bombs just because I have to be so accurate with them. So I tried to parry as many things as possible and that's pretty much how I got through the first phase. During the second phase I just tried to kill the eels as much as possible because believe it or not they're actually pretty easy to kill with the lobber bombs. Also occasionally I would stick up above near the top of her forehead just because it's a way for me to avoid her freezing attack, so that's pretty cool. For her final phase, I wanted to save up my super so then I could do a lot of damage really, really fast. And other than that, it was just damage tanking until she died. Easy. Bro, I, like, just call me green cheese! Ah! Now we're on to probably the hardest boss in Inkwell IL-3. He's a repeat offender. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. Hey, yo, what the f- He makes you piss yourself on thought. It's Dr. Cal. Since this is a plane level, you can probably already expect what loadout I have, but my shot was the lobber bombs, and my charm was the pea sugar. My main strategy for the first phase was to take out the two bottom parts first while getting parries, so then I would have my super saved up for phase 2. Once I used my super in phase 2, it was only a couple bomb hits, then he was into phase 3. Once he was into phase 3, it's easier said than done, but basically I wanted to try and dodge as much as possible, obviously. But then I wanted to get as many parries as well because... Really, the bombs don't do enough damage, there's not enough openings for you to actually do damage with the bombs, so I wanted to use my super as much as possible, and that meant I had to get a lot of parries, but after way more time than it should have, we beat him. Oh, fuck. <sighs> With those bosses defeated, we're on to the first boss of Inkwell Hell, King Dice. And you know how we do it here. Not only do we do it on expert mode, but we also kill every single one of his mini bosses, starting with Chips Bedigan. My loadout for this boss fight, since I can't switch it, it's obviously going to be the Lobber, the Whetstone, and Super Art 3. For this mini boss, it's really just a lot of jumping and a lot of EX uses. Since he's constantly bouncing up and down, and since the lobber's range is absolutely horrible, I really have to get as close as I can to him and then just continuously jump until he dies. The next boss up on our kill list is going to be Mr. Wheezy. The Mr. Wheezy boss fight is actually extremely easy because the lobber actually has enough range to reach across the platform, so I actually don't have to worry about range in this boss fight and it's really simple after that. Up next we got Pippin Dot. The Pippin Dot boss fight is a lot like the Chips Bedigan boss fight, so it's just a lot of EX usage and a lot of jumping. One cool thing was whenever they spawn their minions, I can actually use the Whetstone to kill them instantly, so that was kinda cool. Other than that, it's just jumping till they die. Up next we've got Hoppus Pocus. Hoppus Pocus is absolute <laughs> garbage and I hate it. The only way I was able to do this was just a lot and a lot of damage. As many EXs as I could spare and as many supers as I could use because other than just good RNG with where the skulls are, that's the only way I got past this boss. The next boss up is going to be Fear Lap. I didn't put up a survey for what weapon I should use for this and given all the other bosses, 
I'm guessing it would have been the bombs, so I just used the bombs. Really, all I tried to do was stay up at the top of the screen because there's nothing really else I could do. That's the only way I can do damage. I tried to do that, and I tried to parry as much as possible for my super, and yeah, we beat him. The next boss up is going to be Pirouetta. Now, this boss is extremely annoying, but the whetstone does make it slightly better because I can get some chip damage in whenever I jump over the top of her, so that's nice. Other than that, it was just a regular boss fight. I tried to stay as close to her as possible because that's where the lava does the most damage, and yeah, we did it. The next boss up is, of course, Mangosteen. Now, come on. It's Mangosteen. Really, all I did was stay underneath him and shoot up, and he's dead. Next boss up is going to be Mr. Chimes. Now, one cool thing about this boss fight is I actually had a perfect run. This was my first time doing it without getting any of the card matches wrong, and... Other than that, this boss fight wasn't really that interesting. It was a lot of just me running around till I could get bomb hits on him and using my super, and that's it. Over here. Holy sh! A f perfect one! No f way! Are you kidding me? For the final mini boss, we've got the Tipsy Troop. Now, I saved this boss fight for last because I thought it was the most interesting because the first two are very easily taken out, but once we get to the big one in the back, it's actually extremely hard to hit him and you need to do a calculated jump lobber shot whatever to actually be able to hit him. So I just wanted to save this for last because it was really interesting figuring this out. Just like that, we're on to the main man himself, King Dice. Now, I'd love to say this boss was the hardest out of all of them, but it's not. Really, all I had to do was just not suck at parrying, and since I was always in his hitbox, I'd be hitting him with the lobber pretty much all the time, especially when I was parrying. So it did so much damage, the fight was over pretty fast, and we beat him. With King Dice defeated, we're on to the final boss of this challenge, the Devil. <laughs> POV, you pass out, and I... Steal your kidney. Three days until a Mario steal you liver! And for the final boss of this challenge, believe it or not, our loadout was the Lobber, the Whetstone, and Super Art 3. For the first phase of this boss fight, it's pretty normal. It's really just me standing underneath him and shooting up. And that's pretty much it for the first phase. For the second phase, it's actually damage central. I'm able to jump up and use my Lobber shot while using the Whetstone and do so much damage that he enters phase three pretty quickly and once he enters phase three i've got my super built up so i use the super plus the whetstone to deal a ton of damage and just like that we're on to the final phase where we hit him a couple times with the lobber make sure to use those ex's and we've won Let's go! I need it, boy! There we go. To answer the question, if there ever really was one, can you be Cuphead with the worst loadout possible? The answer is yes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I've been making a lot of videos and I'm having a great time doing it. Hopefully, you're also enjoying them. Um, lately I've been making some YouTube shorts, go watch those if you haven't, I've been having a lot of fun making those as well, and if you have any suggestions for videos that you want to see, let me know down in the comments below, maybe some different games, it's up to you guys. So yeah, just comment down below, let me know, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video, if you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video, bye.